The first joint we're going to talk about is the talocrural joint. That is a synovial hinge joint between the distal tibia and fibula and the body of the talus. The plafond of the tibia is the concave surface forming the superior part of that articulation. The medial malleolus articulates with that medial facet of the talus on the medial aspect. Then the fibula, the lateral malleolus of the fibula, forms the lateral surface and articulates with the lateral facet of that talus. The trochlea is the largest part of that talus and provides most of the weight-bearing surface between the tibia and that talus. Because it is a synovial hinge joint, its primary motion is in the sagittal plane of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Next up is our subtalar joint, which is the articulation between the inferior talus and the superior part of the calcaneus. It is a synovial plane joint, which are three paired facets between the talus and the calcaneus. On the inferior surface of the talus, you have the anterior, middle, and posterior facets, and you have matching anterior, middle, and posterior facets on the superior part of the calcaneus. Because there are three different facets, it allows for triplanar motion, inversion, eversion in the frontal plane, abduction, adduction in the transverse plane, and dorsiflexion, plantar flexion in that sagittal plane. Next up is our transverse tarsal joint. This is a functional articulation between our rear foot and our midfoot. It is composed of two different joints, the talonavicular joint on the medial aspect. This is a ball and socket synovial joint with a lot of mobility. And the calcaneocuboid joint on the lateral aspect. This is a saddle joint between the calcaneus and that cuboid on that lateral aspect. Functionally, these two articulations together behave as a compound multi-axial synovial joint that again allows for triplanar motion. So you have ab and adduction in the transverse plane, you have inversion, eversion in the frontal plane, and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion in the sagittal plane. So the role of this transverse tarsal joint is really to modulate the flexibility of the foot. During pronation, it unlocks, allowing that forefoot to be flexible for shock absorption. During supination, these bones lock, making the forefoot rigid, which allows you to transfer your power from your gastroxoleus into the floor for push-off.